were hot off the heels of the Berkshire Hathaway annual general meeting. And there were a lot of gems that were dropped by Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. However, one gem that is being missed right now is something that Charlie Munger dropped at the Westco annual general meeting when he was speaking about investing in the semiconductor industry. And so that's what I want to talk about in this video. And so guys, as you smash that like button, let me run that intro. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Now a couple of months ago I put out a video on Taiwan Semiconductor and I was actually looking at investing in the company. However, I was kind of thinking about reasons why I shouldn't be investing in the chip space and you know the obvious reason is that I'm just not as experienced in the chip space in general. But one of the things that I learned as I uh, learned more and more about the chip space is I found that if you look at the cash flow statement all of the money that these guys are generating, they're just reinvesting it right back into the business. And my question is, how much of that is just to stay ahead of the game? And how much of that is maintenance cap? I don't really know. I'm assuming that it's all CapEx, but what it really told me is that this might be a business that doesn't have a lot of excess capital that it can spit off for other things and you know that's something that charlie munger actually spoke about at the westco annual general meeting and so without further ado let's go to exactly what charlie had to say about investing in the semiconductor industry and keith from uh, cupertino california writes in and this is in the same vein but a little more focused um, how should we think about the political cli political climate around taiwan and the long-term impact on the semiconductor industry specifically do you see the chips and the science? Do the Chips and Science Act favorably? The semiconductor industry is a very peculiar industry. In the semiconductor industry, you have to take all the money you've made, and and with each new generation of chips, you throw in all the money you previously made. So it's compulsory reinvestment of everything if you want to stay in the game. Naturally, I hate a business like that. <laughs> At Berkshire, we like a whole lot of surplus money to come in that we can do something else with. And, uh, of course, now, if you're enough ahead of it, like Taiwan Semiconductor is, that, that may be a good buy at these prices. I, 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 it's not at all clear to me that, that, that they're not going to succeed mightily. But it's a, it's a difficult... It, it's a business with enormous promise for the big winner. But it's a difficult business in requiring everybody to keep increasing the bets on and on with all the money. And so it, it's not perfect, that semiconductor business. And here's what Charlie Munger was talking about in action. So you can see that exactly happening with Taiwan Semiconductor. This is their cash flow statement. And you can see there, as their revenues have increased, you don't see the revenues here, but you do see the net income increasing. So of course, if the net income is increasing, obviously that revenue is increasing. You know, notice that so have their capital expenditures increased at a substantial rate as well. And their free cash flow as a percentage of their revenue averages in that sort of like 20% area, obviously higher uh, in the last five year area uh, five years, maybe it might come down uh, as the economy enters a recession. I'm not really sure. I would say it probably averages higher than the 20. But notice that they'll make like in 2021, 40 billion dollars in cash flow from operation, then they're reinvesting 30 billion dollars right back into the business. Now, a part of this is or, or a big part of this is the fact that you know there's just an insatiable demand for chips and so they uh, are reinvesting because they are increasing the um, returns for the business the problem i have however is that i'm not smart enough to understand uh, how much of this is going to give them future sustainable growth and really what i'm thinking and what i'm seeing from these financials is that this is an industry where you continuously have to reinvest to stay ahead of the game. Otherwise, you turn into something like Intel where you actually end up falling behind. And so that's kind of what I'm concerned about investing in uh, the, the chip space in general. But ultimately, TSM is uh, the best company in the world in terms of uh, a foundry, uh, you know, just a company specifically focused on being the foundry. And that is an absolute sustainable competitive advantage. I would just say that I'm personally not smart enough to invest in this business. And, you know, that's not something that I haven't already said on the channel i've been saying it a lot but you know i'll continue to say it and you can see from taiwan semiconductors p l that the company still has exceptional value as they're expected to grow significantly over the next 10 years so here's what i'm forecasting their growth to be um, you know, they're going to be powering the cloudification of businesses, the AI revolution as well. And I think, you know, geopolitical risk 
is a concern for this name, but ultimately I don't think that um, th there's going to be significant geopolitical issues. Now, I know Warren Buffett was asked about this and he uh, kind of like danced around the question, but I'll, I, you know, if, if you were to ask me, I would say that I think cooler heads will prevail uh, between China and the US. But, you know, ultimately, you know, between 15% a year growth into 2028 and then a seven and a half percent growth thereafter, I think this is being a little bit pessimistic and yet their net income is still substantial substantially increasing from uh, what I think would be around $29 billion in 2023 to 67 or $68 billion in 2032. So, you know, there's a long runway for growth. And I think a lot of people are going to make money uh, in this name, even if I'm one of the people that are going to uh, stay on the sidelines here. Now, another thing that Charlie Munger was asked, or what are his thoughts about the uh, CHIPS Act that was passed in the US? And how will that benefit companies like Taiwan Semiconductor? Here's what Charlie had to say. But I Remember when Intel owned the world? Intel yeah. was once the Taiwan Semiconductor business of the world. Yeah. They invented the damn business and they dominated it for decades. And Intel, it's not clear to me that Intel Intel's going to have a very decent semiconductor business getting as far behind as they are now. It's my answer is it's not so damn foolproof as it looked. Even with the incentives to build plants here in the United States, like Intel is doing in Ohio? Well, of course, that will really help. But they're borrowing the money. There's no indication the government is going to forgive the loans or something. It's, it's, it's not like the recent loans to business where they said, we'll loan you the money, and then you know, the way ahead, go keep the money. The government is not planning to do that with these new semiconductor loans. Look, it's, it's, it's not a field where I feel I have a lot of expertise. What the hell do I know about semiconductors? Do you worry about any conditions that the government would put on companies that end up using any of that money with semiconductors or anything else? Well, of course, all of that, it, it's deeply intertwined with government policies of both China and the United States. So I would rather have something that's more foolproof myself. But I do think Taiwan Semiconductor is the strongest semiconductor company on earth. So I am a, I am a big admirer of what they've achieved. It's just incredible of what they've achieved. Uh, speaking of things you like better, Ami Pins And by the way, it may be a wonderful investment. The fact that I don't like it because I'm an old man and I don't like learning new tricks. That doesn't mean it isn't right for some younger person that understands it better than I do. Now, it's always great to hear from Charlie and his thoughts. However, I did show you guys the uh, model for Taiwan Semiconductor. And if you want access to that model, you can get access to it at this lower tier. And if you want to join us for a live monthly call, you can join us at this higher tier. Join over 200 Patreons that are supporting this channel. And I recently released a video about writing covered calls and how they can actually reduce risk for your portfolio overall. And if you if you've missed that video, you can actually get access to that video right here.